started his legal career in the year 1980 as an advocate in the chambers of Sri N. Natarajan, senior advocate, and Sri S. Ramani Natarajan. He later joined the office of Subaraya Ayer, Padmanabhan, and Ramamani, where he practiced income tax, central excise, and custom laws. The respected senior advocate set up his independent, independent practice in the year 1984 and appeared primarily before the Honorable Madras High Court on its original appellate and writ sites. During this time, he was predominantly engaged in matters relating to income tax and central, ta uh, central excise, customs and company law. He also appears as amicus curie appointed by the Honorable Supreme Court and various uh, Honorable Supreme Court and various high courts to assist the, mat, uh, the court in matters on questions of constitutional and taxation laws. He has authored several highly reg regarded legal commentaries which include Guide to Central Tax Law and Practice with Accounting Practices, Commentary on the Constitution of India among others. He was the revising editor of A. Ramaya Guide to the Companies Act and Kanga and Palkiwala's The Law and Practice of Income Tax. May I request Senior Advocate Shri Arvind P. Dattar to the dais for presenting his topic.
middle we had the competition commission where again the chairman was the uh, uh, i think cabinet secretary the two members were the finance secretary and the commerce secretary again we filed it that's called dc's case our name is not there the madras bar association name is not there but we did the main arguments and we went through the boothling of report the ram uh, reserve bank report which mentioned about the competition commission and i still remember when i appeared before lahore ne he said that look i see this you have a competition commission it's a quasi judicial body it's headed by secretaries so in a sarcastic way he told the attorney general i think it was the lord manager at that time he said i will said i've got a very good suggestion for the uh, to eliminate criminal cases areas let the commissioner be the judge and let the inspector be the prosecutor to finish all cases in no time and then the competition commission was forced to be changed by their judicial component also now this is the thing where we are right now but i just give you a brief historical background to the tribunals but before that just when i came this is gopinath mentioned about faceless assessments and faceless appeals so i don't know who gets these brilliant ideas and my point is i am all for innovation i am all for innovation but i was going to ask somebody before you put this to try it as a pilot project when you put a new system and you put a new thing i would suggest put it in one state put it in two states three states see how it is working if it is really going to improve assessments please do that no problems but you roll it out nationally overnight and then of course we have these uh, problems and to my mind i still don't understand if i go to central circle I got regular assessment. If I am a foreign taxpayer, I get regular assessment. So a hundred crore assessment of a foreign company is regular assessment, but thousand crore large company will go for faceless. And I am told by my colleagues, particularly in Bombay, that it's very difficult to argue the faceless appeal. Just imagine that I go to court number six in the Madras High Court. I don't see just Sarvan and I don't see just Gopinath. I'm simply arguing something. Is it possible? Not able to refer to documents. Not able. So the lawyers tell me when they say, "Please see page number so and so," the person says, "Yes, I have seen it. Please proceed." And what was dangerous in this matter was when I was doing a matter before the chief court, and there's something concerning the tribal members, you know, when they were not appointing the members and so on. The union filed an affidavit saying that the number of cases have drastically dropped, so we may not require more tribal members. I had just come from Bombay, and the uh, Bombay Tax Bar, Chamber of Tax Council, told me that five lakh appeals are pending in the in the CIT appeal stage. So I told the chief, I said, look, this is not correct. There are five lakh appeals unless the CIT appeal decide the matter. There can be no nothing before the tribunal. So he's recorded that in the order that the statement of the union is not correct. Now let's go to my actual topic. So my point is, faceless appeal is scrap it. It is better. At least appeal you scrap it or. You say that for matters more than 100 crores of 200 crores, it will be a physical assessment because you require a personal hearing to decide the case. And this kind of thing, the officer doesn't know, and you don't know. I mean, you must must have modified your brains. Your assessment, your order is before him. Your address is there on the note. He doesn't know you. You may not know where it is gone. And now in the Delhi airport, I've been appointed. I must am I just curious? This FAO and JAO. FAO is this faceless assessment officer is called FAO. And jurisdiction assessment officer is called Jao. <laughs> no, it is. No, this is actually when I'm arguing for Shankar and uh, this thing, we all say, "Well, the Fau says this, the Jao says this." <laughs> so uh, I just tell you a short, small joke. This is Pandit Chaudhary. So this Fau and Jao, who has the jurisdiction, is a question, and I've been appointed amicus. So will the Jao have the jurisdiction or the Fau have the jurisdiction? Just digressing for a moment, I was I met just a little Pandit. Came to Delhi. He did not know word of Hindi, <laughs> so he was talking to his brother judges. So one day he wanted the driver to come. So he was saying, "Aaj ap aao." He said, "Ap jao." <laughs> And then he was waiting in the portico for the car to come. <laughs> the driver had gone to Supreme Court. <laughs> so he said, "Any theory of the power? What is aao? What is jao?" So anyway, now come back to the topic. 60 years of uh, the tribunal. Actually, the history is more than 60 years old. The Income Tax Appellate Tribunal provisions first came in 1939 for an independent body to decide cases. And if you read, if you see Palkiwala's commentary, in the beginning you have excerpts from various judgments. 
there is an excerpt from Justice Beaumont, Beaumont of the Bombay High Court, where he says, I've been sitting in this presidency for the last seven years. I find that every order passed by the income tax officer is affirmed by the first commissioner, again by the second commissioner. So nothing has changed over the last hundred years. You know, so the commissioner order will invariably confirm, 147 invariably will be affirmed. So there is no tension, you know, you're going to do that, you're going to move on in life. But the income tax tribunal came in 1939. But the first tribunal was constituted in 1941. And interestingly, the first president was Munir Mohammed, who later became Chief Justice of the Pakistan Supreme Court. In partition, he left Pakistan and he became the Chief Justice. And then we had a strong tradition of so many tribunal members becoming High Court judges. I just spoke to Justice Ishwar. He was the 33rd person to be appointed, and after him, Madhuri Devi Justice, Madhuri Devi was appointed in Telangana. So 34 tribal members have adorned the bench of the High Court. When I joined the bar in Ramamani's office, Subra's office in 1981, the ITAT was 40 years old. Right? And uh, when I did wrote Courtroom Genius, I, in one of the interviews I was told by somebody that Palkiwala was also a labor lawyer. When I went to invite Justice Kapadia, he said, yeah, Palkiwala used to come for a lot of labor cases. So then I was doing some research. How was he doing income tax cases and labor cases? The answer was, when he started his practice, there was a lot of labor litigation. Unions, trade union movement was at its height and so on. The ITAT would sit in the morning, the labor tribunal would sit in the afternoon. So morning would finish income tax cases and post lunch would do the labor cases. It's a very nice way of, for the revenue generation and also for learning the law. But that's how he did both. Then we came to income tax tribunal and during my interviews with various people, the one of the key notes to Parkevara's success was Sir Jamshedji would only do in the High Court because his advocate general he would he had no time to go to the tribunal. And Palkiwala started appearing in the tribunal regularly. So the growth of Palkiwala in a sense is also was fostered by the income tax after the tribunal. And all the seniors, Bansi Mehta and so on, whom I had the privilege of all had extremely high things to say about the tribunal members. You had just Ranganathan, you had George Cherry, and so many people sadly they're not before us. So this is how the tribunal started. Now, one thing you know, when you talk of tribunals, there are basically three categories of tribunals. One are tribunals within the judiciary, and that is the motor accidents tribunal and the rent control tribunal. These are tribunals, but they are manned by members of the judiciary. So, then you have the income tax tribunal, the sales tax tribunal. These are all quasi-judicial tribunals where there's a list between a citizen or a taxpayer or whatever and the state. In fact, the industrial tribunal also is a judicial tribunal because it's headed by a district judge. Then you, then you have the tax tribunals and then you have the Article 323A and 323B tribunals. So, income tax, when I joined the bar with Ramani, it's already 40 years old and I must say that I was one of my happiest days was the three years I spent from 81 to 84 with Subrat and going to the income tax tribunal in Nangambakam, just Ishwar, Jay Kumar, Philip George, Janathan Raja, or just Janathan Raja. I learned so much from all these people and we had a wonderful sense of camaraderie and friendship which has continued to this day and we used to meet every Saturday morning in the tribunal and each of us would discuss what are the important cases. And to the credit of some members, for example, just TNC Rakarathan, if you had come to the tribunal on Saturday, he would come and sit with us and uh, discuss the case. It was so nice. So it was how income tax. Then we had the excise tribunal which came in 1982, which was modeled on the basis of the system. Then we came to company law court, where the first shift started towards the bureaucratization of the tribunal, where tribunals started being manned by civil servants, and that objection we took. The next important case we did was the NCLT, which came in 2002, and we filed the writ petition, challenging it, but the Madras Bar Association for it. And to our good fortune, it came before Justice Jaisima Babu and Justice Garpa Venaya. It was going to be heard by them. The government tried to put a googly, and 
on the day because Babu was going to retire in 15-20 days time. So on the day he posted for hearing, the matter was not in the list. I went in the morning and I told him the Lord, the Lord should have posted specifically, it's not in the list. So he asked the courtmaster what happened. They were talking something I couldn't hear. Then he said, I will take it at 2 o'clock, 2.30. Then the then addition solicitor, I won't take names. He said, bro, it's not on the list today, we are not ready. You need not be ready, I will start with <laughs> This is Babu. We start. Then bro, I'm held up in some other court. You are junior get take. <laughs> and that's how the matter started. And we heard it before this is Babu. And though he upheld the validity, you see, my argument before the tribunal was, when you talk of tribunal, you must talk in terms of concepts. What are tribunals? The first tribunal in the world was in 1600 and something, the special commission of the income tax. Then you had tribunals everywhere. Now, when I was arguing company or tribunal, I said, nowhere in the world, nowhere in the world is there a company law tribunal. There is no tribunal where the list is between two citizens, two individuals. Income tax tribunal, it is Datar versus ITO or X versus department. But no tribunal where it is Mr. X versus Mr. Y. And I, I gave a complete chart. In fact, there's a fantastic book on company law from Nigeria. We had done all the research, thanks to Mr. Vadwa's help. We got all the company law provisions everywhere and there was no tribunal at all. And we gave all the cases. And this Babu struck down certain provisions. He said, unless you amend it like this, it will not be. That was the first matter we came and the matter went to the Supreme Court. Company law was a statutory tribunal, not a constitutional tribunal. And of course, the first Madras Bar Association was passed in 2010. In fact, I almost got dismissed. To my luck, it came before Justice Sirpurkar, Justice D.K. Jain, and Justice uh, K.G. Balakrishnan. And it took two and a half hours, it's two half days to convince them it has to go before the five judgment. And that's how our journey started. Then we had the National Tax Tribunal, which was the NTT. And the interesting stories. Yeah. Can I take a question? Sure. Sorry. No, because lunch is waiting, so I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. National Tax Tribunal came. It came as an ordinance. What was the earth shaking ordinance you got, Mr. Then I was told subsequently that some particular person wants to be the president, it came before the National Tax Tribunal. I, it came before Justice Subhash Reddy. He should notice. I asked for a stay, he said, no, I will not stay. And it was a 323B tribunal, it was a constitutional tribunal. We also challenged the validity of, because basic structure, he said validity of basic structure, we challenged that also. He didn't issue note, he said, I won't give stay. We can't stay a statute. And those of you who are interested in judicial review, please see a full men judgment of Justice M. N. Rao, Sakinala Harinarayana of the Andhra Pradesh High Court, that has been quoted in Chandra Kumar and Athrod. Outstanding judgment on judicial review. He had the courage in the High Court to strike down 323B D. Anyway, coming back to the narrative, we got notice, then we are told that they are going to start with the selection process. Now, how destiny, God, whatever you may call it, near the Advocates Association, there is a juice shop. I don't know how many of you remember, below the, below the staircase, there should be a juice shop. Still there. It's still there. Why? So, I used to normally go there and I used to often catch up Mr. Gopal Ratnam in those days. He used to also come to the juice shop to have a smoke. Yeah. So, while I was going, someone told me, he said, the advertisement for uh, National Tax Tribunal. So I went to the notice board and to my horror, they said the members include retired judges. They said apply with passport photograph, school leaving certificate, college degree certificate and so on. So I asked the secretary to give me a Xerox copy. I went to Subhash Reddy and said, they are asking high court judges to give passport photographs in school. Stay. <laughs> Stay. But the sad part is, when the matter came for hearing, 31 High Court judges had applied with their passport photographs. And <laughs> anyway, so 
National Tax Tribunal came. Initially, both NCLT and NTT were heard together. I argued for both. For some reason, when the judgment came, I think this is KJ Balakrishnan was retiring. So just before retirement, the last paragraph, to my surprise, it said, we are detagging NTT. They upheld NCLT, but detagged NTT. And NTT came four years later. And finally, it came before Justice Keher, before Justice Nariman. And as you know, we, I tried to argue 323A, 323B. I, one of my regrets of my life is I did not succeed in striking out these two obnoxious articles. And I say obnoxious because I use the words of CY. If you follow, 323A, 323B are two articles in one chapter. This, these two articles were inserted by the 42nd Amendment and CY called it an outrageous amendment. These two tribunals were inserted. Now don't forget the background of 19, the 42nd Amendment, which was introduced in the emergency. If you read the constitutional amendment, virtually judicial review is eliminated. No high court could decide the question regarding a central act. Even if it's a state act, minimum five judges must hear a case. Three-fourths majority must decide it. In the central state also, only five, five judges and three-fourths majority. So virtually they completely, I don't want to go into various 144A, etc. Very, very damaging provisions which virtually emasculated the judiciary. 42nd Amendment. And the worst of them was section 4 and 5 of the 42nd Amendment, which tried to get our case on a Bharati and said that, I want young people to please read the 42nd Amendment. You don't know how lucky you are to live today, you know. 42nd Amendment, the section 4 and 5 are the first two sections which say, they amend Article 368 and say, no constitutional amendment shall ever be deemed to have been illegal. So from 1950, every amendment is valid and they don't stop. They say any amendment in future also cannot be challenged. That was, those two sections were struck down in Minerva Bills and they upheld part of Article 31C. But this is what 323 AB. This was a system to create an executive judiciary outside the judicial system. 323A is administrative tribunals. 323B is other tribunals. Now please go home and check what are the other tribunals parliament envisaged, emergency envisaged. Rent control tribunals, tax tribunals, land reforms tribunals, and criminal matters relating to the above. You could have a criminal tribunal manned by executive. And 323B4D, which was struck down in uh, El Chandra Kumar, said parliament could exclude judicial review under Article 226. And now when this was first challenged, I have never understood why the judiciary simply did not strike it down. Even Justice Kerr's judgment in the tribunal case, you can have a tribunal but must be as good as a high court, as independent. I mean, which world are you living in? It can't be. Even in Sampath Kumar, if you see Justice Bhagavad, Bhagavad, Justice Bhagavad's judgment, have an institutional mechanism which will supplement but not supplant. It should be as good as a high court judge. It never, never happened. So 323A was upheld. 323B again we lost. But thanks to Justice Nariman, he completely struck down the case and he, please see the concurring judgment of Nariman. I quoted one of the most beautiful passages in case of Bharati is para 727, where they quote Lord Atkin and he says that you have a series of encroachments. He says the law, if the law tolerates a series of encroachments, you'll come to a time when you cross the boundary line and that is not permissible and just Nariman said, Entity is the boundary line, we strike it down. And that's how the entity struck down. Now, we thought that that would be the end of the matter. But thereafter also we had a number of cases. In fact, my colleague has pointed out just to see you what are the cases we have filed. And you can see now there are 14 cases. And the 15th case is by the Madras Act. Bar a full list of cases again and again we are going. Now come to the 
Roger Matthews case. In 2017, uh, tax bar came in 2014, NCRT came in 2010. So 2017, suddenly, in the finance bill, on the last day, like this year also, JC Tribunal, 17 tribunals were changed overnight and provisions were added. We challenged it. One key which we raised was, you can't do it in a money bill. Money bill under Article 110, 111, 12, 13, 14, etc. say that it is exclusively for financial matters. You can't have a patent tribunal in the money bills. Again, I'm very sorry, unfortunately, Supreme Court upheld that money bill part, but it's now referred to seven judges. I'm very sad, but in the Pakistan Supreme Court, four times when Parliament tried to insert something not connected to the money bill, the Pakistan Supreme Court has struck it down. So, you know that what stops you from simply striking it down? Chandra dissenting judgment, now it is coming to seven judges. You can't put a money bill because you don't have majority in Rajya Sabha, you can't put a money bill and pass it. And talking of Rajya Sabha, I missed one important point which I must tell you. Three twenty three A and three twenty three B is in a sense a constitutional accident. And why? After the 42nd amendment was passed, the Janta government came to power. They had a majority of 70. One of the additions by the addition was tribunal chapter. Rajya Sabha, the constitution amendment. Just as the 122nd Amendment Bill became the 101st Amendment Act, 45th Amendment became the 44th Amendment Act. For some reason, the Congress Party objected to deletion of secular socialists and tribunals. I don't know why. So secular socialists continue and tribunals continue. So if they had agreed to drop the tribunals but insisted on secular socialists, we would not have 323A and 323B. And now that you tell me, we had so many tax tribunals and except West Bengal taxation tribunal, no tribunal survived. Everything went off down the road. Now come back to Roger Matthew. Now we are in an era where the money bill is in uphill. So 17 rules are again struck down. Once again challenged before the Supreme Court. Again struck down. And it is a matter of deep regret that the latest act which you have again challenged just as Nageshwar Rao and others, two is to one, they struck down the law in February or March. Within four weeks, another act is passed, which is not even changed or come up. I've been telling the chief again and again, this is unacceptable, at least state. No, let us see, let us see, let us see. Till today the matter has not come up, three years have passed. That is the unfortunate position. Now, we are still fighting the matter. We tried to, the matter was posted on 11th August and 370 came, so we got shunted to background. Now Assam will come, again it will go to background. Then Sabri Mara will come, again it will go to the background. So I really don't know when this entire drive will come. Meanwhile, the selections continue. Having started my life in tribunals and having fought the tribunal issue for 45 years, and I've had the occasion of studying tribunals in different systems. I was appointed amicus by Justice Gogoi to give suggestions for reforming the tribunal system. So with the help of Vidhi, Center for Legal Policy, we have given a report to the Supreme Court. Of course, it is, I don't know what happened to it, it's their part of the record. We strongly, now we have to see, we have to first decide what is our vision for a tribunal. And I am talking in a, in a sense of sadness. What is our vision for a tribunal? If it's going to be like a high court or like a judicial body, it has to be completely. Different. 
I don't know how many of you know that when the income tax tribunal was started in 1941, the tribunal was not part of the Ministry of Finance, it was sent to the Ministry of Law. In the railways, the, the Commission of Safety doesn't work under the railways, he works under some other ministry because he has to be maintained as independent. And many judgments are there in tribunals, the Legat Committee report, which says that it is not, it, they will be perfectly independent, but the person must perceive it to be completely independent. The, it is not the actual bias, but the appearance of bias which is most important. I filed a writ petition. Now, eight years have passed. I said in Chandra Kumar, they said that all tribunals must come under law ministry. First, don't keep it under the nodal ministry. Right? IPAB was in the Ministry of Science and Technology. So it should come under independent ministry. That is the thing. This is the worst you can do for the growth of any tribunal. The worst. NCLT, because I'm doing tribunal cases, everybody keeps ringing me up and say, please, this case, that case. So I get a lot of feedback. Now, if it's company law or tribunal, I think income tax also. Once you become a tribunal member, I think you can't practice in income tax for the rest of your life. Is that correct? It's correct. I suggested first, if it's income tax, central excise and so on, why can't the person join at 40, 45 and go on till 62? First, I said that it be a selection post. We gave statistics. In the Madras High Court, at one time, I don't know the exact year, there were seven posts of district judges and 3,000 lawyers applied. I told the, I mean, we gave the report saying that, look, I'm sure a number of young members, after finishing 10 years of practice, they may feel that a judicial career is more temperamentally suited to me. I would like to be a judicial member. Then with possible promotion to a high court if possible, but at least he can decide his career that at 40, 42, he said, all right, I am now going to shift. I'll go to the tribunal and I'll be there for 15, 20 years, no problem. What is wrong? Why this four years and five years? We were asked to have meetings, Mr. K.K. Vanupar, myself, somebody from the law ministry all came. No, 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 we have to be very sure that only good people come. If the selection is going to be a committee of Supreme Court judge, law secretary, etc., etc., you will select good people. You've got an IT report, you've got everything. Who knows what will happen five years down the line? But this is not an answer that if you have five people, there will be greater integrity and if you have four lesser. It's completely wrong. That is just an excuse. They also know it's not true. Then I said that, look, I told Mr. Venkopal also that his five years is not correct. The Attorney General gave an assurance on the Auditing Union of India that as a normal route, we will extend it automatically. But the Company Law Association tells me that not one NCLT member has been renewed for beyond five years. Not one. Despite the assurance given. So I said, if a person has got good company practice, why will he join the NCLT and ruin his career completely? Right? So one is on the five-year term, which we have to protest. And look at the, if I may say so, the pettiness of the government. They introduced three years in 2017. You got it struck down saying from Sampath Kumar it is a minimum five years with renewable. It must be renewed. Even para 120 of Madras Bar says you have to renew unless. There are reasons like this, uh, other integrity issues you should renew. Again, they made it three years. Again, this is Nageshwara struck it down. Now they make it four years. I mean, is it a, some kind of a point just to say that I will not obey the Supreme Court? Do what you want, I will not obey the Supreme Court. That, to my mind, it's a wrong signal. You see, it's your own Supreme Court. If you don't respect it, what happens? So, one is three to four year, five year term. Second is the way of the selection comes. And I said, if a tribal member is there, don't make him barred for life. Give him a two-year cooling period that after he 
demits office after five years, he will not practice in the NCT for two years, then he should be allowed to start again. Then only we can put members. Now coming to the conclusion of my topic. In fact, my point is this trend is dangerous. You got this board for advanced ruling. We had authority for advanced ruling. What a wonderful body it was. We used to have hearings in the Samara Hotel. Mr. Ranganathan was there, Said Shah Kadri was there, Justice Reddy was there, P.B. Reddy was there. Some outstanding judgments. Sirpurkar was there. And now you have a board for advanced ruling with three commissioners. The point is, I don't want the view of the department on my tax library. I want the view of an independent tribunal who will tell me that, look, this is the possible taxation. You are talking about foreign investment. And many, many foreign clients have they just lost hope. They said, no point going to the BAR. But I said, everything has a silver lining. You go to the BAR, it will automatically be rejected. You can straight away go to the high court. That's the answer. But this is the trend. The GST tribunal, which is now again been admitted, thanks to Madras Tax Bar Association, Supreme Court has issued notice, and now it will come for hearing. When I just saw all collective prayers will perhaps bring out the In the GST tribunal, for some reason, lawyers are not eligible. I don't know why. When it came before just Manikumar and Subramanian Prasad here, just here, we said, what is the logic for not having lawyers being judicial members? They issued notice and asked the government to file an affidavit. You'd be surprised to note that one paragraph answer was, it's our policy decision. Just one para affidavit. It's a policy decision and the High Court accepted. Now please note, this kind of misnomer that a policy cannot be interfered, that is completely wrong. Peter Grimm was a great German scholar. He says, judicial deference is not to the policy. Judicial deference is to the reasons behind the policy. If an elected government, if an elected government says, this is my policy and for ABCD reasons, Neither, no, Justice Arun or any other judge can't say, no, no, I don't think that's the correct reason. That is the reason. You don't second guess it. But they cannot push out the support and say, look, it's our policy decision. I'm asking myself the question, if a lawyer can't be a judicial member, who else can be? Answer is retired high court judge or district judge. So this is one main challenge we have taken as to why. And there are several other provisions. For the life of me, I don't know how you're going to have four-member tribunals. Company law board had challenged in 1991. Company law board went on. They could never recruit nine members. Those of us who have been in SISTAT, ITAD know that vacancies are a complete problem. If you're going to have a 250-member tribunal, from where you're going to recruit people, I don't know at all. But that is where the position comes. Then I tried to argue in my notes to the GST Council also, but we did through the Advisory Council and so on. We said that, why do you require four members? See, GST, Central GST is in English. All state GSTs are in English. All are mirror images. The words are absolutely identical, barring for some very, very irrelevant changes. So whether a person from Assam sits in Madras, or a person from Tamil Nadu sits in Haryana, He's going to interpret the same section 16, section 17, what is supply service, what is place of service, same. Why do you want to query? To my surprise, a very senior officer told me, IS officer told me, no sir, we require members to protect our interest. Now, this is the mindset which has to go, that a tribunal member is not to protect anybody's interest. And I told him, I said, sir, if it's an administrative tribunal and your case comes up before that tribunal, would you want that member to be protecting the government's interest or to deal with justice? So this is the whole mindset of saying that tribunal must be under the executive. You must let go, let it be an independent tribunal. And we talk of colonial legacy, but is it not a shame that the British kept the finance tribunal in the law ministry, but we still insist on being part of the finance ministry. I'll tell you horror stories about the IPIB, but there is no time today. One success which we had was to get the IPIB shift all the cases back to the commercial court. I think all trademark patent cases are now going to the commercial court. And one thing which you should all, if you are a lawyer or a tax bar, which you should request is, in the NCLT, let it be confined to IBC cases, all company cases, operation, mismanagement, shareholder dispute, let it come back to the commercial court. You'll have the high court judges will be a far better way to deal with it 
and NCLT can be confined to uh, IBC. We are trying to do that. Let us see if we succeed. Now, what is the role of the Madras Tax Bar? My humble request is, please be vigorous in your protest. So many people have condemned me, made nasty phone calls, why are you coming in our way of promotion, all sorts of things. But we have to keep the fight because ultimately we are here because of the judiciary. Our livelihood has come from the judiciary and if we don't support the system, nobody else will. If all of us collectively work, we have been able to stop the National Tax Tribunal, we have been able to get some kind of independence to the extent possible. Now, for example, uh, when uh, lawyers can't appear, you have filed a writ petition. Why can't the MTB meet and pass a resolution saying we condemn this and we send it to the ministry? Important provisions which are against the law, why don't you pass a resolution move it? I will take it up and delete to the extent possible. But let us not just be here to have functions. I keep telling other organizations, it's not just welcome and farewell. But in between, if anything agitates the members, you have to protest. And in the end, unless we fight for ourselves, nothing will happen. Unless we protest, nothing will happen. They will simply take us for granted and do what we want. We are in a dangerous situation where Supreme Court judgments are not being followed. With impunity, they do what they want. This is what I want to do, and that is being done. But if all of us in the bar get together, put up a fight, we will do it. On my personal note, thanks to the Madras Tax Bar for filing the red petition, and I'm sure that we have your support to ensure the independence of the tribunal and ultimately of the judiciary. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We are truly grateful for the wealth of information you shared with us, most of which was your own first-hand account in tracing the legal history of the tribunals to the present position and its issues. May I now invite Ms. L. Maithili Neha, Vice President of Madras Tax Bar, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to all of you. Honorable Justice C. Sharvan, Honorable Justice Gopinath, Senior Advocate uh, Mr. Arvind Datar, Senior Advocate Mr. Mani Shankar, Senior Advocates, the other uh, members of the Madras Tax Bar, and our special friends who have made it uh, to this uh, uh, event and not to uh, 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 members of our own Madras Tax Bar who is now the member of the Central Administrative Tribunal and the learned uh, uh, members of the uh, uh, CAT who are here. We are, uh, all, of, uh, all of you who have paid it, uh, uh, you know, taken your time off your busy schedule to make it to this event which is, I can see, a full hall, well attended. And each one of us have been in that, had a very enriching experience listening to the brilliant speakers. Just to, you know, uh, take you through the highlights of today very briefly. Uh, with uh, our Honorable Chief Justice started off, I mean, let us say, uh, in fact, we started from the very beginning, starting with a prayer song by Jayalakshmi and uh, Shweta. We set off to an auspicious start with, uh, for, and of course, uh, uh, Kiran and Pallavi did an amazing job of putting this event together with a wonderful introduction. And, and followed by our Honorable Chief Justice, who was, his speech was so inspiring. And what really was common with all the, speech, the speakers was. They were, the, the self-effacing manner in which they began and actually what they were speaking, every word was a pearl of wisdom from which we could all learn so much. Here, uh, Justice uh, Saravanan on artificial intelligence, touching upon one of the most uh, uh, current topics of today. Uh, made, it was a very well-researched speech. It had all the painstaking effort was evident. 
Uh, all, of course, we started off maybe with a Kodak moment, but it continued on to, uh, and uh, you know, that artificial intelligence can never replace critical thinking and analysis. And as lawyers, we will know what will happen if artificial intelligence is overused at our various levels of adjudication, right up, up to the courts, we will be challenging orders literally for non-application of mind. It will be artificial intelligence that is decided. So we need to be careful and watch out for those pitfalls of artificial intelligence. And never forget that it is only a tool. Otherwise, it will be, and to think that we are the creators of artificial intelligence, that which will finish us like Bhasma Sura, we need to be careful, we just need to be watchful in this entire use. It's the use that is, has to be watchful, not the tool itself. It should be sharpened by our own intelligence. And uh, going on to uh, Justice Gopinath, um, his speech is uh, uh, guidance, a great guidance to all of us and to the youngsters here, uh, uh, encouraging them to study. Uh, go through uh, the judgment in the Keshwaram Industries case to understand uh, the various, uh, uh, you know, the manner in which, uh, in fact, he too touched upon AI. I think it's something that has caught our imagination. And uh, the battle of wits that will ensue, that will follow with the AI and our intelligence will be the battle between the courts, the, I mean, it will be a battle between our minds, the human intelligence and artificial intelligence. And human intelligence has to win. And Mr. Dattar, as, as of course our own Mr. Dattar, who has been uh, a guiding light for the entire tax bar for a very, very long time. And everyone has looked up to him or on to, for any matter on taxation, the first name that would come up would be Chandran Dattar. And true to that, he has taken us through the topic, the trials and tribulations of tribalization with what I would call the, what we've been through today. And the 60 years, the way the tax laws have, uh, he is in, in fact, I think out of the 60 years of taxation he is talking about, he's been a witness to a good part of it himself, personally. His personal anecdotes, his explanation, his guidance, the in-depth, uh, uh, you know, some things he's allowed us to peek into some of uh, uh, his personal experiences with the, in handling these cases and what could be more significant than considering MTB has challenged the GST, the tribunal, GST tribunal, uh, and, and he is appearing for us. What more can we ask for in an in a event like today's? MTB may be a one-year-old baby, but it is filled with stalwarts, with people with expertise, and we have a room full of experts sitting here, and here to encourage many more to enter the field. Thank you very much, and I'm sure you're all waiting for the sumptuous food that is there, uh, awaiting all of you. Anna Lakshmi is known for its uh, fabulous food. Please do enjoy, and we do have with us, I mean, I must thank Ahari has done a wonderful job, our Aparna, uh, the entire executive of the team, Mr. of Mr. Satish Sundar, Mr. Anand, the ATS, everybody has put in there bit to put this event together, nothing is anything at If I missed anybody, it's only because lunch is awaited and nothing. I would request all the members to please rise now for the national anthem.